until you've sort of learned to not be a smoker. And with this method, we can probably help anywhere from 30 to 50% of people who smoke to quit. You only have to have a small desire going. Okay? So again, I'm going to just summarize this for you quickly. Remember, if you know someone who smokes, what should you not do to them? Don't push them, which is usually the first thing that comes to mind. Very important. Okay, number two, if someone tells you, I just smoke, I don't know why, can you explain to them the three reasons why they smoke? Happy. Habit. Stress. Psychological. Stress falls usually under psychological. That's very important. Physical needs. And the physical need for their body. And if they have that desire, if they're willing to make an attempt, because most people will say, yeah, I want to quit, but are you willing to consider a quit date? And they'll, you know, they'll, they might say no. So that person's not serious. But if they're willing to do it, we need a quit date. And then we need the habit breakers. How can we break the habit? How do you make it inconvenient? No smoking in the house. No smoking in the car. And do not carry it. Don't carry it on you. This is very effective. Completely kills the habit. Don't sit down with people who smoke. is very, very helpful for someone after they quit especially. Very helpful, especially in that first week. You may want to completely avoid smokers. You may want to empty your house of anything that reminds you of smoke. Can I add something else? Yes. You cannot use your car if your car is smoking. Don't use your car if your car is smoking. Okay. <laughs> that's good. Sorry. Yes. No, no, that's good. How about like the brother said that we would say, oh, you know, if I smoke, I, you know, I don't gain anyway. weight. Which is, I think, to a certain extent, is true. But the average person will gain about 10 to 12 pounds in the first year after they quit. This is true. Now, some people will gain a lot of weight. There's four reasons why we gain weight if we quit. Any ideas why? Deep uh, eating. Oh. You eat more, why? You're frustrated. Smoking You're frustrated from lack of nicotine. Anxiety? Ni nicotine is an appetite suppressant, so when you get off the cigarettes, your appetite goes up. Plus, you're more stressed and frustrated, so we want something sweet that makes us feel good. Anxiety. And the anxiety. anxiety. And people like to keep their hand and mouth busy, so you can keep it busy with sunflower seeds and chocolate and a lot of good stuff. And then cigarettes take away your sense of smell. So food tastes very good when you quit smoking. So you want to eat it more. Okay. So those are, you know, kind of the quick keys that we use to quit. Um, any questions? Yes. One more thing that uh, most of the smokers, they are, uh, they, for example, in the morning, they like to take the coffee and the cigarette. Any time you take coffee, you want to take a cigarette. So if you, you, you can easily stop or reduce the coffee, so you don't have to go with cigarette. I agree with that. Yeah, that's the And I know something else. I know something else. So when he fights with his wife, he right away go and smoke a cigarette. What, what's the solution to that? <laughs> he said if you're single, don't get married. No, the thing you have to go married. Single, get married. And if you're married. Okay. When married person has almost stress, you know. Stress, anxiety, worry. Any, anyone else have questions about smoking? or other types of smoke. Anyone do shisha? Some people do shisha. Is shisha better or worse than smoke? Much nicer taste. <laughs> Much nicer taste. More worse. More worse. Hookah, hookah. Shisha, hookah, bagpipe. Bubble, bubble. You have to drink a more worse. The hookah more than worse than the cigarette. What are the hookah? What is the meaning of hookah? Like I see that a lot of Muslim brothers going to. Who can explain the hookah? Water bite. Water bite. Water Yeah. So a lot of names for this hookah pipe, but this device supposedly one sitting at it might be as bad as two packs of cigarettes. So even if you do this twice a week, once a week, you're still getting your fair share. Okay. 
Who started this uh, bad habit in the world? Who started smoking? I think it was, in our Western world, I think it was introduced by Christopher Columbus. Really? I think so, supposedly. The, uh, the, uh, the uh, tobacco leaf was used a very long time ago, I think by some indigenous populations. So, uh, right. so you can look that up like to verify this. I think Arabic also. They used the big Bible. Arabic country also. Uh, which one is dangerous more than the other? Cigars or cigar? Cigars depends a lot on how much of it you inhale. So most cigar smokers do not inhale com at all, or a lot don't inhale at all. Some people will inhale partly, like 20%. Some very heavy cigar smokers will inhale at all. But a cigar, one cigar also can be very powerful, maybe equal to a pack or more of cigarettes, but it depends how much you take. But there's always the risk on your mouth and your throat also. So what about the second hand, like our kids? Secondhand smoke has been proven that it can be definitely dangerous to kids and to other people around us, which is, you know, the basis for all our laws to take smoking away from public places. So definitely, if you have children, if you have other family members who smoke and you do smoke in your house, it's a great idea to take it out of your home so you don't expose them to it. My feeling is most people try to do that, especially if they have kids. How about yeah. chewing tobacco? Chewing tobacco... Most of the problems of it related to the mouth, like mouth cancers, throat cancers, and also the nicotine itself you get has some problems for the heart. So you will get some nicotine. But if we had to choose cigarettes or chewing tobacco, we probably choose, uh, choose the chewing tobacco because at least the lung is not directly affected. But it's still not, definitely not something healthy and not a healthy replacement. But you're going to get a gum disease. You had a question. Uh, why people are drinking in kawa and smoke, and why he losing his eyes? Because I've been in Gulf country, and I know that a lot of people drinking kawa. You know the kawa, right? Coffee. So, yeah, and, uh, and smoke. Coffee. And a lot of people losing eyes also, eyes vision. Yeah. Eyes eyes eyes. A big part of it could be habit, because usually people drink their coffee in the morning, the first thing so when kawa, they wake up. Kawa, kawa. kawa or coffee, a lot of people, well at least here, people drink their coffee in the morning and they've been asleep all night, they haven't had any nicotine, so when they wake up in the morning, they want nicotine. And so they may attribute the coffee, it may become kind of like a habit thing. So it affected eyes? I don't know how it affects the eyes. I, I don't know the relation about it. Yes. Uh, not specifically, but we are, I know some places it's illegal to smoke almost anywhere in public, in California. I don't know about San Bernardino. Okay. Any other questions on the smoking issue? Okay, Jazakumullah khair. We'll stop at that, inshallah, because it's time for prayer.